Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great time wherever you are. It's been a while since I made a video talking about website design and that's why in today's video I'm going to be talking about features that you either need to add or remove from your website in order to make it look a lot better, make it look modern and hopefully also increase the traffic, the conversions and sales on your website as well. So without wasting any more time, Let's jump right in. All right, so the very first thing I want to talk about here will involve the use of slides, especially on the home page. Now, I remember back in the good old days when slides used to be in fashion. Like, if your website didn't have slides, then it was considered to be like outdated and old, like your website needed to have slides. However, it is the year 2024 and slides have gone out of fashion. And I would argue that you do not need slides on your homepage. Rather, you'd be much better off having like a very simple background image or if you prefer a background video plane as opposed to slides. However, there are exceptions where slides can actually be a very good idea. You're looking at Zara. If you've never heard of Zara before, they are actually a clothing brand, very, very, very popular. There are certain websites like Zara where slides are actually applicable and would actually be a very good idea because they sell clothes. So it's a nice idea to actually have the models pose, you know, advertising the clothes they're selling and then have them in all these different kinds of poses. Like you can see right now, the guy with this very acrobatic kind of like dance move. You have the guy with the hands in his pockets looking all very, you know, uh, sexy or whatever, <laughs> I don't know. And then, um, you know, for certain kinds of websites like this, it makes sense to actually have slides. So for fashion websites, uh, maybe websites that sell art, for example, or paintings, right? You can have the paintings and slides because it's actually quite entertaining. A visitor can simply sit down and just observe and watch the models or the paintings. But for most websites, say for example, uh, a business website, a website for uh, an accounting firm, a law firm, uh, a blog, uh, a social media site. In those kinds of websites, it's not going to make any sense whatsoever for you to have slides running. So rather than slides, much better for you to have like a background image or if you prefer a background video on your homepage. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is going to involve the header and specifically the navigational menu and yes we're still on the Zara website and that's because even though they did a good job with the slides the header unfortunately they made some mistakes and the very first mistake in here is having a very unnecessary search bar your navigational menu is meant to replace the search bar when i come to a website and i'm searching for something the first place I'm going to think of going to is going to be the main menu because hopefully I'm thinking the main menu should be able to help me find what it is that I'm looking for. So the search bar in here is completely unnecessary. I'm not going to come in here and start typing in uh, shirts for men. No, my brain is thinking, okay, the main menu, I can see man. I'm going to click on man and then where are the shirts? Shirts are right there and I'm going to click on shirts. So the search bar in here is completely unnecessary, but there is also another problem. And I don't know if you've spotted it yet. Even though we have a main menu in here, I don't know if you've noticed on the left, on the top left hand corner right there, we have another menu. What looks like a mobile menu. You click in there and guess what? We have another menu. Selected by linen, shirts, pants, jeans, t-shirts. Okay. Why do we have this? This is completely unnecessary. Why not just have this very simple menu right here that's specifically for women. So if I was a woman and I wanted to buy something, I would go to woman, click in there and then find what it is I'm looking for. If I was a man, I go to men, I click on men and then I find exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So having this extra navigational menu in here is extremely redundant. It makes no sense. And then the search bar in here makes no sense as well. So please make sure that your header is very, very neat and clean. Ideally, there should be only two items on your header, the logo on the left hand side and then the main menu on the right hand side. Now, your main menu can have like sub menu items. It could even be a mega menu. 
just don't have an unnecessary search bar, an additional uh, menu, and then also social media icons. Don't have social media icons on your header. Much better to have them on the footer of your website. Number three, and this is a very, very, very important one. That's going to be the lack of clear call to actions, CTAs, and banners that don't make any sense at all on the home page. Listen, the single most important section on your entire website is going to be on your home page, and it's going to be the very first section just after your main header. Right here, we have the main header with the logo and the main menu, but then look at the banner with the headline. It says, see the patient, trust the technology. See how. What the hell is, what's this? Like, what are we talking about here? What is, see the patient, trust the technology? This makes no sense. Listen, the main banner, the headline, should be able to instantly tell a brand new visitor what your website is all about in less than three seconds. I'm looking at this, I don't know what, what we're talking about. Yes, I know this is obviously some sort of like a medical website. I can see the doctor with the patient, but what kind of medical care are we talking about here? Is it for the heart? Is it for the brain? Is it surgeries? Like, what are we talking about here exactly? And here's another one. This is actually from Accenture. If you've never heard of Accenture before, well, that's surprising because Accenture are actually one of the biggest accounting firms in the world. This is a multi, multi-billion dollar company, and yet their website has silly mistakes. Look at the headline right there. It says, reinvent what your business could be. Let there be change. What? Like, like how? What is this? This doesn't make any sense. Reinvent what your business could be. Okay, how? What are you selling me? Now, to be fair, it is essential. It is one of the biggest companies in the world, so they can get away with having these kinds of mistakes on their website. It's kind of like a, 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 a massive YouTuber, right? You know, in YouTube, they always say, well, if you want to make it as a YouTuber, you should make sure that your thumbnails are well designed, your headlines are very, very, very catchy. But imagine a YouTuber with millions and millions of subscribers. At that point, they don't have to care about making sure their thumbnails are well designed, they can just post a video and it's going to get plenty of views because they're already massive. They've crossed a certain kind of threshold. So the same thing kind of applies to websites for businesses. Once a business has become so massive, I mean, you look at websites like Reddit, for example, okay? This, the interface on Reddit, I can spend hours criticizing the interface, but who cares? Reddit is so popular that no one even cares about how bad the user interface is. It is what it is, but... Imagine if Accenture in this case right now was like a small to mid-sized company, they might run out of business very, very quickly because nobody knows what exactly this is. Like what is reinvent what your business could be? Let me give you a good example of a headline and a call to action from our good friends Elementor and it says create a website, design your future. Instantly we know that, okay, we can create a website with Elementor and then they have like the subheader right there, power your vision with Elementor to build, manage and host stunning websites. We've got you covered from A to Z with the number one website platform for WordPress. So it's very, very simple. Anybody who has never heard of Elementor before, they come to the homepage and they instantly know that with Elementor, they can build the website. Now, slight criticism in here. I believe that the design your future headline is a bit too dramatic. I would rather have preferred something like create stunning websites or create amazing websites. I think that would be a lot better than create a website, design your future, but hey, that's just me. But make sure that on your website, the main banner, make sure that the headline grabs attention and indicates to a brand new visitor exactly what your website is all about. And then also the call to action, the button, it could be something like get started or shop now. Uh, learn more, view more, something like that, okay? But make sure you have a very strong headline. You can have a subheadline as well to add more context to the main headline. And then also a button inviting the user or the visitor to do something on your site. Next, we're going to talk about spacing. And yet again, I'm using a website from a very, very popular brand, Bulgari. And it's kind of amazing how there are so many of all these multi-billion dollar companies and businesses that have very badly designed websites. I honestly think they need to have better web designers. But look at Bulgaria. Look at the header right here. 
Now, you may not instantly tell what the issue is, but I've actually redesigned the header. So I want you to determine for yourself which looks better, okay? This is the original from Bulgaria themselves. And this is the header that I redesigned for them. Which of these two do you think looks better? This is the original. This is mine. Now, obviously, I know you're going to choose mine. And the answer is very, very, very uh, easy. It's because... The reason why that is very, very easy. Because mine has a lot more space than the original. You look at the original right here and it's like they're trying to like pack things together. Like make it so tight. Why? You should have enough spacing. Let your website breathe, okay? You're allowed to have as much space as you want on your website. It's not like you are uh, buying something physical where the more space you buy, the more expensive you'll, the more money you'll have to spend. No, you're entitled to have as much space as you want. Also, let's scroll further down in here, okay? Take a look at this. Take a look at the footer section right here. Look at the subscribe to our newsletter section and then look at the footer. Look at that and then compare that with mine right here. This is exhibit A, exhibit B. Obviously, exhibit B is better because exhibit, exhibit B has more space. Again, it's all so jumbled up like they're trying to like pack sardines in a tin. You don't want to do that. Make sure that your sections have enough breathing space between them. Also, when it comes to spacing, whether it's using margins or patterns, Make sure that the spacing is consistent across your website. Don't make it so that, oh, the first two sections on your homepage, the space between them is like 50 pixels of margin, but then the, 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 the spacing between the second section and the third section is only like five pixels. That's not going to make any sense. Make sure that the spacing across your website is consistent and that you're actually making use of spacing. When you have more space on your site, it's going to make your website look a lot better because it's going to give your website more breathing space and overall the design will simply be much better. So do not make this mistake that Bulgari are making where they don't have uh, any space at all. Next, let's talk about ads and I am going to use the Daily Mail from the UK as an example in here. And my gosh, this is a poorly designed website because they have thousands of ads running and I get it that ads make money, obviously they want to make money, but when you run way too many ads on your site, you run the risk of actually turning people away. It's fine to have ads on your site, just make sure that they're not cluttered all over the place and that they're actually affecting the experience of the reader on your site. Look at this, they have an ad on the left hand side right there ads on the right hand side and then they have another ad just above the title of the post and then you scroll down and oh yes we've got even more ads we have a video ad playing in here as well and then we have another ad in here as well we have another ad in here as well you keep scrolling down we have another ad in here as well you keep scrolling and you just keep getting more and more and more ads and it's just not it it turns people off if you want to have ads on your site it's fine but make sure that they're not affecting the user experience and ideally try to avoid video ads. Video ads are, they are probably the most annoying types of ads, especially the ones that have like sound. That's such a huge turn off. So please make sure that if you're going to have a video ad running, make sure they're set at a minimum. You don't want to have too many of them. And then if you're talking about like ad placement, personally, I'll prefer you don't have the ads on the sides because then they make the content look wider with ads and it kind of like takes the focus away from the main content on your page. So if you want to have ads, you can have an ad. Let's say, for example, on a blog post, you can have the ad just above the main uh, title for your blog post. Okay, that way it doesn't actually interfere with the contents of the post itself. The ad is separate from the post that the user wants to read. And I'm trying to open up the post right here. And unfortunately, it's not opening up. I don't know if, okay. Okay, there you go. Finally, it's open. So in this kind of scenario right here, you could have the ad running. Okay, this is fine. You can have the ad up right there, just above the main post. And then the user or the reader can simply come in here right now and start to read the post 
after the ad. But now look at this. We have an ad on the left hand corner right here. We have the video ad playing on the bottom right hand corner. And my gosh, this is just, it makes the website look so rough and disorganized and disjointed. And I wouldn't want to spend time on such a website. So please, you can run ads on a website, but run ads in a way that it doesn't affect the user experience. Now, one feature that you absolutely need to have on your website is going to be the post dates. Now, I've seen some web designers out there on YouTube uh, advising that it's much better to not have the dates that your posts were published. And for me, that doesn't make any sense at all. If I'm reading a post on a blog, I would like to know the date that post was published. If I don't see the date it was published, I'm probably going to stop reading the article and simply go elsewhere. Why? Because I want to make sure I'm reading an article that is updated. Why would I want to read an article that was written three, four years ago when I could find another article talking about the same issue that was written a few weeks ago or a month ago? So please don't listen to so-called web design experts on YouTube or wherever else that will tell you that, oh, remove the post dates from your post. You don't need to indicate the date the post was published. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's one of the fastest ways to lose credibility. Make sure your posts actually have the date it was published. And if you are kind of a bit embarrassed that your posts are outdated, then update them. That's the simplest thing to do. Just simply update them with the with the most uh, relevant and up-to-date information. But please do not make that mistake of removing the dates the post was published from your post. You will lose credibility that way. One other thing I wanted to mention would be the date, the copyright date that typically you would have on the footer of your website. As an example, this is from Kinsta. And you can see right there they have the 2024 Kinsta Inc. All rights reserved. Uh, make sure that the date right there on your footer is actually the current year. I have seen websites where you might find the date there going back to 2022, 2021. And that's because the code isn't set to update automatically. The code was written there manually and somebody in their team forgot to update the date to the current year. So please... Do not make that mistake. It's another way to lose credibility. Imagine somebody going to your website. They like your content. You know, they're, they're feeling like, okay, you know, I think I like this website. I'm going to do some business in here, buy some things. And then they scroll all the way down and then they see, oh, 2022, all that's reserved. Instantly, they would feel, oh, maybe this website isn't as well maintained as I thought it was. Maybe this website is no longer active. I'm going to go elsewhere. So please make sure that the date on your footer, the copyright date or all that's reserved date is actually set to the current year. Another feature you need to have on your website is going to be a well-designed 404 error page. Now the 404 error page is of course the page that will be displayed when a user tries to visit a link or a page or a post on your site that no longer exists. Now, I've seen so many boring, terrible 404 pages and you might be missing out on potential traffic and customers if your 404 page is poorly designed as well. Now, in here, I got from the search uh, engine journal 37 examples of the best 404 pages and you can look at this one right here. Uh, 404 errors, oh snap, the cat ate your file again. That's pretty funny actually. And then you scroll down in here and then you're going to see some other examples. One from Disney, which was actually very, very funny. And then one from Drift as well. Uh, one from Help Scout. Like you can get different kinds of inspiration. But the idea here is this. People can make mistakes, okay? It's possible that maybe they mistyped something on the keyboard and they ended up on the wrong page on your site. Rather than simply driving them away with a very boring, thoughtful page like, oh, page error, this page doesn't exist. You can add some humor and say, oops, looks like you stumbled across the wrong page. Why not click here to go to our home page? Like your 404 page needs to have some humor that will, you know, make the audience understand that, oh, okay, this is a, a fun website. And then there should be some sort of like a link or a button on that 404 page that will take them ideally to your home page. So do not miss out on this opportunity because you might be amazed how many people might have tried visiting your site, but maybe because 
they mistyped something or maybe because they visited a page or a post or a link that no longer exists on your site, they ended up on a poorly designed for, for, for page and simply went away and they'll never come back. So make sure that you have a well designed for, for page that's funny and that also helps the user redirect them back to your actual home page. Okay, and the very last thing I want to talk about here would involve the main menu once again and thankfully this is something that i very rarely ever see again and in fact i tried searching online for websites that still make this mistake but i couldn't find any and the mistake is having the home link on your main menu that is seriously outdated and it's so redundant please do not have the home link on your main menu because Everybody knows nowadays that if they're about to click on the logo of your website, it should take them back to the home page. So please make sure the logo is set to go to the home page when the user clicks on the logo. And if you have the home menu item on your navigational menu, please remove it. It is seriously outdated. Well, there it is. Today's video talking about some features that you either should add or remove from your website. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Share this video with anyone who may feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. If you're new here to the channel, welcome. My name is Alex. I make content around websites and web development and WordPress and so on. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. Stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.